The first question that I got was, my child is always putting off things. He promises to do what I tell him to do, but then he doesn't do anything. How to change that situation? I think this is one of the most common complaints of parents. I try to tell my child to do something and he doesn't do it. I tell my child not to do something and he does it. These two complaints are the most common complaints that parents have about children. If you have difficulties with getting your child to do things that you want the child to do, then there are a few things that you might think about. Uh, the first thing to understand that is not only children, if you are a mother, you may find that it is sometimes difficult also to get the husband to do things. The same thing, you tell your husband you want him to do something and he doesn't do it. You tell your husband not to do something, drink beer in the evening or something, and he keeps doing it. This is human. It's one of the key questions in human psychology. How do we influence other people to do like we want them to do? Also, managers in companies have the same question. How do they influence the employees to do the things they want the employees to do? So we are talking about a problem that is not only about children, it's about human beings, sometimes even about ourselves. How do you get yourself to do things that you don't want to do? All right, so let's look at some options. First, first, it's not a good idea to complain and criticize. Many parents, when, they, when their children don't do what they want them to do, start criticizing, maybe even yelling. Why do you do like that? I, I hate you when you do like this, when you don't do like this. You are just like your father. You know what I mean? When you criticize people for not behaving the way you want them to behave, it only makes things worse. It's very human. That was, that's what we all do, at least sometimes. But it's not very effective. So. Let's look at some options. The first option that comes to mind is a small thing that sometimes works. Now, when you say to a child, I want you to do this, and then the child doesn't do it. So think about the possibility that instead of saying, I want you to do that, you say, we want you to do that. Of course, in a kind voice. So you say, I've spoken with your father about this, and we both feel, your father and me, you can add people, your father, me, and your grandmother, we assume that the child loves his grandmother, we want you to brush your teeth now, or we want you to go to bed now, or we want you to finish that job that we that you have been doing, or we want you to put away the, call, the, the mobile phone that you are playing. So this I call the we strategy. In Chinese, woman. <laughs> Wa shi, woman. So you try to speak in terms of we. Your daddy and I, we would like you to do this, or we want you to do that. Is that okay for you? So. You get consent from the child by using we. Actually, you can, you can say we want you, but you can actually bring the other person into the picture. So if mother and father and grandmother imagine are holding hands, just imagine, it's a metaphor. They are holding hands and they are saying to a child, we want you to clean up your room now. It's very difficult for the child to say, no, I don't want to clean up my room, or start to do cleaning up the room and then finish uh, stop, stopping doing that in a few minutes. 
So this I call the we strategy. And if you think about the we strategy, you will probably find some ways to use it. For example, there was a kindergarten teacher and she told me that she usually is quite good at getting children to do things that she needs them to do. And I asked her, what's your secret? Me, me. And she said, well, for example, if I have to tell a child to put on his hat, you know, like you have to wear a hat when you're outside. So I say to the child, I promised to your mother and father to make sure that you have your hat on. See, that's another example of using we instead of I want you to put your hand on now, which automatically creates resistance. You could be a little bit playful. I mean, if you want a child to do something, you could say, I would like you to do, clean up your room now. And then add something a little bit playful, maybe, maybe like, if you do it within three, I'll give you three minutes. If you do it in three minutes and you finish the job, I'll give you a surprise. Don't tell what the surprise is. I'm going to give you this or that. You spoil the curiosity. Now the child is in the position. Huh? Should I do it? Should I not do it? Shall I start you know, fighting with my parents about this? But the curiosity may win. So the child may, what's the surprise? It's not a surprise if I tell you what it is, you say playfully, and you raise some curiosity in the child. Now what could the surprise be? Make sure it's nothing, you know, that costs money. Don't, don't give any presents to the child. It's not a good idea to get children to do things and then you every time you have to give something to them, or buy, a, buy a new phone or give you them, you know, stuff that cost money. No, no, no. The surprise should be like, um, you know, like a favorite food or something nice that you do. I play with you five minutes on a computer or something you do together with the child. Maybe you tell them a joke, collect some jokes, some funny jokes that children like. And then you say, I have a surprise for you, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. But if you finish it in three minutes, I'm going to give you that surprise. And then the surprise is simply telling the child a joke. It's a kind of a game. The child understands that this is a game. But if it's a nice game, you will be able to play it again. And you will have fun and the child will have fun. Let me tell you another technique that um, I found together with the family. The mother was complaining that the child doesn't want to do things and I tell her that she has to go and play her violin and, and she doesn't do it. She says, yeah, in a minute, mother. Not now, but very soon I will do it. And the mother is, mm, because she says it again and again and again. And, and she's desperate. How can I get my child to do the thing when I tell her to do the I like her to immediately do it. So I looked at the girl and I said, um, so do you have any suggestions? How can your mother, uh, you know, give you instructions to do things so that you do them? And I was hoping that maybe the child will kind of suggest something. Because if the child suggests something, whatever the child suggests, it's good to listen to it. And it's good to take it seriously because there might be something. There might, might be useful, the child's idea. Usually if the child suggests something, you should try it. Because now the child is participating with you. Together you are solving the problem. Not the parent is trying to solve the problem but you invite the child to think about how shall we do when I give you instructions, how shall I give the instructions so that you can do it quickly and how shall I not give the instructions so 
I don't make things worse for you. So the child should participate in the solving of the problem. Now in this case, the child didn't have an idea. To ask many times, and try to you know, show respect to the child, but maybe you have some idea. No, she didn't have an idea. So I said, I have an idea. Do you want to know? Try my idea. And then uh, everybody is curious, what is, what is Ben's idea? And I took a little piece of paper and I drew a picture of a violin on the paper. You know, it's just a little piece of paper. I gave it, folded it, gave it to mother. And I said, do you want to try something? And the uh, mother and child says, yes. So I said, let's try this. I, I gave the paper to the mother and I asked the girl, let's see if this works better for you. Uh, and then uh, the mother took the paper and, and instead of her saying to the daughter, now go and play your violin, you have to do your violin lessons. So then um, the mother gave this little piece of paper to the child. And the child took the paper, opened it up, saw the picture of the violin on the paper. Nobody's telling her, but yes, the message is in the paper, in the, in the little piece of paper. And she took it, she looked at her mother, she looked at me, and then in our role play, she started to play the violin. I said, was this better? Did you like this way of your mother reminding you of something you need to do? And she says, yes. So together we found something that might work. So we agreed that they go home and the child draws pictures and cards. They have a, they have a set of cards and the child draws picture of different, uh, you know, activities like violin or cleaning the room, brushing your teeth. And then uh, the child gives the pictures, the cards to the mother. And instead of the mother with a kind of an annoying voice for the child telling, now you have to go, mm, I told you, it's time to go. <laughs> we change the game by the mother simply smiling at the child and giving a card to the child. The child looks at the card. She herself drew the picture. It's her picture. And she knows this is a kind reminder that I need to do an activity. They like that solution. I don't know if this is a solution for you and your child, but it's worth thinking about because there is a kind of a game-like quality and you avoid this annoyed, you know, if, if the parent becomes annoyed. I told you to do it and you didn't do it. Why didn't you do it? This only makes things worse. So let's think about this kind of a little bit more creative solutions.